Do you ever let fear or perfectionism stop you from creating and sharing content consistently? If so, then I've made this video for you. Let me first begin with sharing my experience for you and I think you'll see the analogy to your experience as well. So as you, given that you're watching this video, you're probably in my audience and you maybe have seen more than this video and you know that not every one of my videos you like, right? Naturally, I only want you to like the videos that you like, meaning literally click like or share it forward, etc. Content, the content world really works best as a meritocracy. The things that are truly good should be liked and then shared forward and then float to the top so that we can all see it, right? Now, of course, some people like a piece of content because they want to support the person, but generally any piece of content isn't going to go far unless it's genuinely good and good depends on where the culture is at the moment you know good uh, or f for example something that's funny is different today than it was 20 years ago right what was funny 20 years ago is not as funny today what, what's funny today might not be as funny two years three years from now same thing what's interesting what's exciting today might not be the same as even a year or two from now so so what I have learned over the years of creating content is to become more agnostic about every piece of content that I create and that I share. What I mean is that it's my agnostic means I don't know, right? I don't know whether my piece of content is going to be considered good by my audience and by the market. It's my job to simply create and share these videos. And it's your job as my audience to tell me whether this video or any other video is good or not by liking it, by sharing it forward. Again, do it only if you truly believe it's good. So same thing with you and your audience. It's your job to simply tell your message, to simply share your truth. And it's your audience's job to let you know through social media, liking and sharing forward, etc., whether they really connect with the message you've just shared. It's probably the case that you believe that whatever you share is, is good. Otherwise, you wouldn't share it, right? Same thing. I think this video is amazing. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's okay, but I think it's good. But I think every single one of my videos, before I share it, I think it's good too. And I'm constantly surprised that it doesn't go farther, right? I mean, because I'm an idealist, so I always hope, I always have this hope that, wow, I'm sharing something useful, I try to make it interesting, and it should go farther. It should be shared by people, liked by people, and constantly surprised it doesn't. But I've gotten used to that feeling, and I really encourage you to get used to that feeling of, huh, kind of surprise. And actually, when something is liked and shared forward, so it, it, the, the, the truth is that I'm getting more used to just being agnostic and just being neutral about the content that I share, whether it's gonna go far or not. And I'm letting myself become more surprised when something does go farther than just a few views or a few likes. Does that make sense? And I'm encouraging you to develop that mindset of being agnostic about how your content will perform, whether people will like it or share it. Your job is to write that blog post, to write that book, to share that, you know, write that, uh, to create that video or to make that podcast episode, whatever it is that you make. It is not your job to judge prematurely before you share it, whether it's good. You are simply called to create and share as generously and consistently as you can. And then it's your audience's job to let you know whether the way that you shared it this time is connecting with them or not. Thank them 
you know, internally and sometimes externally for doing their job. And let me tell you, even silence is itself a valuable piece of feedback. Have you ever shared something on Facebook and wondered why nobody is liking it? Nobody sharing it forward? That is the feedback of silence. And that itself is valuable. I want you to reframe this, okay, to remember this. Because silence is your audience looking at it and going, meh, it's, it's okay, it doesn't really connect with them, it doesn't really excite them, it doesn't really, it's not really useful to them, and so they just pass it on. But that itself is feedback to you that, oh, what I, the way I've said it, or what I've said isn't either useful to my audience, useful enough to my audience, or it's not entertaining enough or interesting enough or exciting enough for my audience, or, you know, it doesn't, in other words, it doesn't connect with them enough for them to give you any other feedback than silence. Does that make sense? So you either when you share something, you either are going to get positive feedback, people like it, or people share it forward, or you're going to get, you know, some, you're gonna get all, all along a spectrum of, of something going viral all the way down to silence. Or actually, of course, we can go the other way, which is people being angry at what you said, but even anger is the fact that you've connected with them in some way, right? But the worst that can happen to you, you, your content is silence. And even silence, I'm asking you to reframe as being valuable in feedback. So when you get silence in your uh, feedback, then just take it as going, oh, okay. So that way that I've shared it doesn't quite work for my audience. And so you have a choice. You can either take that same piece of content and share it with a different audience and see if it resonates with them or you can share your message in a different way or share a different part of your message with your audience and see if that connects make sense and so remember the relationship you have to me and my content okay your job is just to like it or or to give me silence as valuable feedback on whether something connected with you or not if it connects with you, if it really resonates with you, then like it and share it forward. If it doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't connect with you, then don't like it and let the silence be a valuable piece of feedback for me. So think about your relationship with me and my, my content and, and transpose that to your relationship with your audience. Does that make sense? Your audience is kind of like you. You to me is like your audience to you. Sorry for the bit of um, complication there. So... Um, so if you are afraid to share content, I'm going to give you three more tips to kind of end this video. The first tip, if you're, I should say, if you're either afraid or finding yourself being perfectionistic and delaying the sharing of some content, then, then, then uh, three tips. Number one is to find a more natural way for you to create and share content. You've got to experiment with different ways until you find the way that's more natural for you. And then once you, once you get comfortable doing the more natural way, you build confidence, you build a, a, you're even a body of content, you build some audience members, then you can branch out and try a different way and see if that works for you as well. I'm going to include a link in the notes of this video to another one of my posts and videos where I share five natural ways of creating and sharing content. One of those five natural ways probably works for you. The second tip I wanna share with you to end this video is to start with a small supportive audience. So share first your content with your friends, your supportive, just a group of supportive friends and colleagues who you know will give you encouragement. Once you've gotten their encouragement, then you have more courage to share with a slightly bigger audience, for example, post it to your Facebook friends 
or share it with your LinkedIn connections or share it on with your email subscribers. Once you get their encouragement, share enough until you get their encouragement, then that gives you the confidence to share it with an even, even bigger audience such as posting, making it a public Facebook posting or eventually you have enough confidence to reach out to other people to promote your content because you truly believe it's good for their audience also, right? But start small and build on each content sharing experience. The third and final tip is to create and share your content from a place of positivity. Whether that be teaching from a place of love, simply what can you share from a place of love? That's all. That's all your audience truly wants from you. It's for you to just share, to teach, to advise, to encourage, um, to enlighten from a place of love or service or joy or even play. So find a positive emotion from which to create and share content that really works for you that will replace the fear, the anxiety, the perfectionism. Because when you return to your positivity and sharing your content, it simply becomes a fun thing to do. Just like it's fun for me to share this video with you, right? So I hope this is helpful. Uh, you may need to watch this video again to kind of really get um, these, these ideas that I'm sharing with you. But I really hope this will help you get unstuck to create and share more content consistently.